Hi, welcome to another installment of my Make Holiday, Make a Christmas and Holiday uh, Project or Gift Part 2. So the first one I did, which was um, yesterday, I made, we made these, we made these earrings out of um, tin cans. They're all made out of some sort of tin can. And what you do is you take the tin can and you either cut it freehand, these are freehand, or cut it with a die cut, or um, cut it with a punch, right? Cut it with a, a punch. And then you um, take them to your embossing machine and emboss them. Now these are, as I told you yesterday, were done with dies and uh, these were done freehand and then I did some circles like these let's see right here I did these and these are I'm sorry I've got a new camera and I'm trying to learn how to use it and I'm not and I'm not doing well okay these are done with uh, a punch so let me zoom out sorry you guys I don't know what I'm doing I'm trying anyway they're all they're all tin cans so, you know, if you watch the video, it's making uh, soda candy rings. It gives you the how-to. You know, I took them, we, we cut the pieces, embossed, embossed them, some we sanded. Then we used alcohol inks, and we also used acrylic paint or fingernail polish to get a desired effect. And then I showed you how to hang them on air wires. Well, today, we're going to take that same similar craft, and we're going to make journaling charms, either bookmarks or journaling charms. You know me. I'm a huge junk. For all of you that know me and watch my channel, you know I'm a big junk journal addict. And I love everything that goes with junk journals. And I love big, chunky charms. So let me just show you this one. This is like a nice size, chunky charm and all of it is it's all the big pieces of it are all made from soda cans and as you can see this one was uh, I think a rock star so the back still has a rock star and now I showed you in the earring video how you can paint it out or sand it out and this I'm not going to do it but what I am going to show you which you can use in your jewelry techniques is how to join them together how to pigtail which is what it's called when you join these beads and just how to add some fun embellishment to any ch any chunky journal charm. Um, what's neat about these is most really chunky journal charms are very heavy. So these are super lightweight and super easy to make and I bet all of you have everything you need right in your stash right now. Okay, so this is one I'm finished and this is one I'm working on and then I've got another one in progress and I'm going to show you how to do it start to finish. So for all of you that love recycling, this is a project for you. So these I took, same way I did the circles, right? These I took to my Sizzix Big Shot and I die cut them on a Bigs die. And I have to say, out of all of it, I mean, I've used punches and everything. Big styes work, I think, the best. So the next step would be to create the, this top part, right? And I decided that I'm going to, to hang this one. I'm going to put it on this paper clip. And now you can put it on anything. You know, you can put it, I have it on a small paper clip. You could do it on a little latch, a clasp, anything, okay? And all these techniques can be used for jewelry as well. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to cut a piece of wire for the top of this. And I'm going to use, I have some 22 gauge copper wire. And you can use, um, you know, any sort of jewelry wire or anything. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be copper. This is just what I have in my stash. The other tools you're going to need is the rounded end of a tapered end of a small paintbrush and a pair of pliers and some sort of nippers. They don't have to be expensive. These are 
I think Bede Smith, I paid like six bucks for him. These were actually expensive pliers. These are German made pliers. Um, I've had them for, I don't know, 20 years. Um, still using them. Awesome. And then this is like a, I don't know, whatever paintbrush you have. You just want a smaller end. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to take our, our wire to our paintbrush and we're going to wrap it around, okay? Until it looks like this. Let me zoom in a little. Thanks for hanging out here with me, you guys. I'm, I'm just learning how to use my new camera system and I'm not 100% I'm not sure, so thanks for hanging with me. So we took our paintbrush and we wrapped it around, okay? You may say, why did we use a paintbrush? Well, we used a wooden dowel because when you work with metal and you use metal on metal, it hardens it. And the more you work it, remember if you were like moving it back and forth like this metal, it breaks. It does that too when you work with it. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take our pliers and we're going to hold the circle, okay? Holding the circle with the pliers, we're going to use our fingers and we're going to wrap the metal around. This is called, in jewelry terms, a pigtail. Okay? You want to wrap it around as far as you can with your fingers, and at the very end, you can use your pliers. You know, I've been a studio jeweler, a fine jeweler for, I don't know, a long time. And I think one of the best advice someone gave me when I first started making jewelry was, if you can use your hands, your hands are your best tool, and if you can use your hands over a, you know, this type of a tool, do it every time. Then we're going to cut off a piece of our wire, okay? And now what we're going to do is we're going to add a bead to this before we put it on, before we hook it on to this. Now because I'm using these um, pink and purpley and blue colors, I'm just going to use a clear bead that I have, a crystal, okay? Now we're going to go back and we're going to take our paintbrush and do the same thing again, wrap, wrap the wire around, except this time we are going to add our clip, okay? So we're going to add our clip. Now I'm going to move this closer to the bead. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so we're holding the circle that's closest to the clip and we're going to use our fingers and we're going to turn the wire around and around until we have enough wraps that it meets the bead. Not so tight that it crunches it. There needs to be some movement, but as tight as you'd like to make it. Okay. And now we are going to, let me just even it up a little. We're going to snip it off as close to that part as we can with our nippers. You know, wire wrapping just takes practice. Anybody can do it. It just takes practice. Be careful when you're snipping your wire that you don't snip your, you know, your end rings. I've done that. I can't tell you how many times. Maybe not so much now, but you know, if I'm not paying attention, I can do anything. Okay, so this is what we've got to start with. We've got our pigtail and our bead in between. Now I'm going to do another pigtail because this sort of sits, I'd like just one more. Okay, so let's do it again. Let's take our paintbrush, wrap it around. Okay, now we're going to hook it on to this bead. All right. Hold the round part. I'm going to pinch it just a little bit so it's closer in the size to the one that it's next to. We're going to wrap it with our fingers. I'm sorry, my fingers are so <laughs> green. I use tie-dyeing today and using alcohol inks. I've been 
trying to do get catch up on all the Christmas stuff that I've I don't know about what you guys are making for Christmas, but I'm trying to finish a, a bunch of projects that I have, and uh, some of it requires dying. And I had, you know, what it's like when you have a, kids and you have like oh, I have five minutes to myself. Oh, I can do this, and you're overly ambitious. I met somebody for coffee today and she said what did you do to your hands and I was like obviously she doesn't craft and she admonished me and told me that I needed to uh, have worn gloves which she was right I do okay so I'm going to decide I think I'm going to do another clear bead and I'm going to put it down now and then I'm going to go back to my paintbrush and I'm going to wrap it around now this time I'm going to add my chain and my chain is all these bits that are gonna, you know, hold on to the dangles, all the chains there. So I have a really large, a very, very large roll of chain. And, um, you know, you can buy chain anywhere. I have some chain in here that's much thicker. Let me see if I can find it and I'll show it to you. I actually really like it. I bought it at, you know, one of those big box stores, which I shall not name. Um, but this chain that I'm unraveling now, I got at a little mom and pop jewelry supply company in New York City where I used to live. I live in the Hawaiian Islands now, but I used to live in New York City. And it's called Metalliferous. And I will try to look it up for you and put a link in the box, in the box below and in the description box if any of you guys are interested in, you know, any sort of, uh, Findings. They have really unique, fun, cool findings, and or big bag, big rolls of chain. Just looking for the end. Okay, here's the end. So what you want to do is you want to take the end of your chain and you want to go. Let me see if I'm in frame. I'm sorry, you guys. This is so new for me. I'm trying. Um, you want to just add your chain onto your pigtail onto your... Now I'm going to show you what I do. I'm going to try and decide how long I want my chain and then I'm going to snip it off. Right? And then take the chain back to... the metal, the wire, and I'm going to do it again. So anyway, back to mom and pop stores. So when I lived in New York City, I used to, I would say I frequented this store, Metalliferous, at least once a week. And I found all kinds of fun treasures. I mean, they have a lot of, like, findings and base metal and um, just all kinds of cool stuff, little filigree things. So for those of you that are into charm making, it's like probably like charm heaven because you can find all kinds of odd things odd findings and stuff you know the the jewelry the costume jewelry capital of the United States is in Rhode Island and or it used to be I think they still do a large uh, portion of made in America jewelry there costume jewelry and uh you know, lots of costume jewelry ebbs and flows depending upon the prices of gold and silver. And when gold and silver are really high, costume jewelry comes back and makes a big um, comeback. And then when gold and silver are really inexpensive, then, you know, it's an ebb and flow. So Metalliferous goes and buys a lot of, you know, stores and things and buyouts. And they've just got cool stuff. I've bought all kinds of stuff. So I am... I'm going to do six pieces of chain for my um, charm because I have six pieces of um, tin can hearts. I have six tin can hearts. So, for those of you that like to make bulky items or big items that give a big impact, if you invest the time in learning how to use, if you have a die cutting machine or you have these punches and you invest the time in um, learning how to use them and emboss them and 
that sort of thing, you can get a really nice visual for very little. I think I said, I'm sorry you guys, I can't see. My eyesight is waning. It's sort of late in the evening here and I promised myself I'd get this video done and I haven't. Well, I did make the video earlier today and I'll tell you a funny story. So I made the video, or I was in the middle of making the video, and we have a little cat. And I was in the middle of making the video, and you know, I have kids, and I was trying to do it when they were all like busy or doing stuff, and trying to do it early enough in the day. And this cat, our little cat, comes running in. I feel something run across my foot. She had brought in a mouse. And the mouse ran across my foot, and then she grabbed the mouse, so needless to say, I was screaming in the video, to which my kids thought that was so hysterical. I, of course, did not. And they wanted me so badly to show you this video. Because I'm failing here, I can't see is what it is. My, my eyesight is so bad right now, and it's sort of late, and... I don't know about you, but as the day wears on, my eyesight gets worse and worse. Anyway, so I didn't make the video I wanted to make earlier. And then my day got away from me, and then... Let me cut the end of this wire. Maybe it's the wire. Um, but then my day got away from me, and I didn't have a chance to make it, and now... It's sort of late at night here, and I'm trying to get it done. Yeah, it was the end of the wire. So there you go. It shows you. I guess if you mash with it, mash it enough, it weird stuff can happen. Um, yes, my day got away from me. So I don't know what you guys are making for the holidays, but you know what? These are great little fun presents for somebody. They make beautiful bookmarks. They make beautiful bookmarks. They make really fun uh, pen pal gifts. And, you know, they're just something super unique. You could give them to a teacher, a friend, you know. And if you have friends that are really into recycling, like I am, like you, I'm certainly sure most of you are, it, it's sort of fun to, like, get something that would have been, especially with, you know, 10 cans. Okay, so let me pat, let me move all this up and let me move this away and then you can see and I'll show you and then I'll show you how we're going to close it and then we'll start adding our charms. Okay, so can you see we have, okay, we have taken our, we've pigtailed our bead there, we've half pigtailed one here and on this one we've added six pieces of chain that we've cut. And we have our pigtail. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back and take our paintbrush and we're going to manipulate our circle, our, our, the part of our jump ring here, or soon to be jump ring, manipulate it down. Okay, you want to eyeball it. They don't have to be perfectly close to each other, but you might want them a little closer. And then we're going to do what I showed you earlier. Ready? You're going to take your... Let me get myself in frame. Sorry, you guys. Learning curve, learning curve. Um, hold the round part with your, fin with your pliers and use your fingers to wrap, to push the wire around. Now, you can use your pliers, too. It's just this wire is so soft that it's easy to do and... You know, as I mentioned before, if you if you move it around or manipulate it a lot with pliers, and say you're not really an expert in it, you can end up snapping it off. Okay. Now I'm gonna. I think I can go ahead and push that part down. So I was gonna cut a little piece of it off, but I don't think I have to. So I don't know if any of you guys watched my embellishment tutorial where I make magazine, where I take magazines and make embellishments. Those would be really cute to add on these as well. I made one with eyeballs 
and but I mailed it out already or I would have it here and show it to you maybe I'll, maybe I'll make another one and show it to you okay so we have our clip and we have our two I'm sorry hopefully I'm in frame we have our clip and we have our two pigtail beads and we have all of our chain so now what we're going to do is we're going to add our hearts before we add all these other bits okay so you can add them a couple of different ways you can add them directly by pigtailing them or you can do a couple of different things like if you can see this bead can you see this bead I put beads on half put the little piece of metal in between the little um, tin can medallion and then put beads on that side okay and then on this one I just put two beads on either side and then put that one on so we're gonna do a variation of different things and we're gonna use a much thinner gauge wire this this wire that I'm getting ready to use is about 28 gauge big spool of it super inexpensive also for metalliferous it'll last a, a long time now 28 gauge you can actually if you like if you would like to experiment and crochet with metal you can um, you can do that with this 20 and 30 gauge metal and I do often sometimes crochet with uh, crochet with metal I've made maybe one day I'll show you guys I've made these amazing well I think they're amazing crochet earrings and different things and just fun stuff okay we're using our seed beads and they're on a string don't take them off a string you can use your wire like a needle and just put them on oh here's some more so I'm gonna put three beads on and then I'm gonna go ahead and put my um, heart on and then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna put three more beads on so these seed beads are super inexpensive I think they were once called and I don't know the history of beading so if I say something wrong please someone feel free to write in the comments and tell me you are absolutely wrong um, let me zoom, out, zoom out a little um, beads I think originated or many of them are called check beads because they were glass beads that were made in the Czech Republic they're made everywhere now but back then that's where they were made so we're using these little glass beads and we're gonna do something similar we're gonna take our our wire and cross it over I don't know can you see well, now I zoomed out now I need to zoom in I'm sorry you guys hopefully I'll get this down okay we're gonna take our wire and we're gonna cross it over okay and we're going to use our fingers and we're going to wind that wire around we're not wire we're not winding both threads both wires just the short one okay and we're winding it around you could also hold it with your pliers you could hold the, you know near the beads with your pliers and then wind that, that around that piece of wire now the thing with a really thin gauged wire it is is it is very brittle so you have to not overwork it you know so just do what you need to with it otherwise sometimes you can over overextend it and then break it off and sometimes if you if it's in the middle of a piece or I don't know I've done all kinds of things so, so what are you guys all making for Christmas I am stumped you know many of you know that I have three daughters and my oldest one is in her mid 20s and is moving to Europe and so she doesn't want anything for the home. Now we do all made handmade presents as I've told you before. And my other my next daughter is a freshman in college and she right now is so focused on college she can't think about anything else. And my last one is 10, and all she thinks about is, is <laughs> Christmas. So there you go. Okay, we're going to take our 
paintbrush tool back to the back to the uh, wire. We've made our loop, right? And we are going to pin the chains in between the loop, and we're going to hold the loop, and we're going to wrap it around with our fingers one more time. So anyway, I think I've t said in my other videos that I, you know. We've been, I, we give handmade gifts for your birthday and for Christmas, and I have made my kids literally everything. Literally everything. Like, I don't, I, it's, I'm kind of stumped. And, uh, so my littlest one wants another junk journal. Out of my three daughters, even though I've made them several, right? Out of my three daughters, she's the one that uses it all the time. You should see how she uses it. Maybe I'll see if I can get her permission to do a flip through of how she uses her junk journal at 10. It's just so precious. You know? Okay. So we have our chains. We have our chain. We have our clip. Our pigtails. And we have one heart line. Now we're going to do the same thing to the other five and then we'll start really heavily embellishing them after we get all of them here. So I don't know what you guys are thinking for the holidays. Like I would love some really good ideas. I am sort of, as I mentioned, stumped as to what I should even think about giving my kids because I've given them everything. So I think sometimes when you've grow up in a house where you give lots of handmade gifts, right? And not that the appeal of it wears off, because it doesn't. My kids definitely value the handmade part. But as my daughter, the one that's moving to Europe said, she's like, Mom, you know, it's like, and she's like, I only need so much stuff, which is true. I mean, that's true of all of us. So I went ahead and I put a lot of beads on this one, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my heart on, and I'm, I may not use all those beads, I may only use like, let me see, two, three, four, five of the ten or twelve that I put on, but it'll just make it easier for the next one. So, you know, I'm open for any ideas, if you guys want to put some in the comments below, that would be so great. So I want you to know the fun thing about making these soda can charms is that you know you can you can make so many of them from one can. I think the most I made was from an Arizona iced tea can and I think I, I want to say I made uh, I want to say that there were maybe I made 18 pair of earrings out of an Arizona iced tea can. So, you think about it. You know, you're not, it's not any money. It's not costing you anything. You've already bought the soda, okay, and you've already enjoyed it. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. I, I made the circle with the beads, and then I crossed it, and I'm going to hold it with my pliers and wrap it with my fingers. So if you, if it's a very little investment. So I think I figured it out one day, like, um, if you, by the time I did everything, like bought the ear wires, I usually make my own ear wires, but it seemed pretty ludicrous to make ear wires, um, which cost more than the earring themselves, right? So I think I figured out like, if you make the earring or you make the soda can part, just two pieces of it, and then you um, put a bead on it, and you put the store made ear wires on it, and you put it on a piece of cardstock, and you put it in one of those little baggies. Um, obviously, depending upon the beads, if you put expensive beads on it, it would be a lot. But do you get the idea? It's like so economical basically pennies, you know? So it's so economical that you could afford to like make a lot of them, give them away if you felt like it. But what's even cooler about it is that they're so lightweight 
that you don't even know you have them on. That's the one thing, is that if you are going to make those earrings, you need to buy those little stoppers, those little plastic stoppers. And before we end, I'll show you what they look like. The little things that you put on the back of earrings. And because, you know, they're so lightweight, you don't even know you have them on. So you could definitely lose them. So think about it. So think about with this journaling charm. I don't know how much money you guys spend on beads. I used to spend a ton of money on beads, especially being a jeweler. Um, and I always have some odds and end bits, like ones that maybe you don't use anymore because the color isn't in fashion, or you're just over that tangent, or, you know, the odd one out, or I don't know about you, but people are always giving me like their odds and end earrings or extra bits different stuff like that because they know that I am a jeweler and that I make other things as well so you know I'm always in line for something like that so when they give it to me it's like I have a whole bunch of supplies for nothing and can use it for anything but you can use anything I think you can get like a like a like a package of the kids beads I think I have a package here I think they were like 79 cents for some bugle beads so if you bought some 79 cent beads in which you could probably get I don't know earrings wise you could get tons out of but charm wise I don't know how many charms you're gonna make but say you get 10 charms out of a 79 cent bag of beads I'm sure you get that easy and then you have your if you did if you get 18 out of an Arizona iced tea 18 pair and say you're using six little charms per six little pieces per charm so 18 pair is what 36 singular if you're using six out of one Arizona iced tea can, so that's six charms and a 79 cent thing of beads, and I don't know what you're going to spend on your on your wire, but it's fairly cheap. And we have two on, and we have four more to go. I don't know. You take. You can do the math. It's really inexpensive, and it's a really fun way. I like. Think about how you can repurpose your um, repurpose your stuff. You know, it's like it's like a no-brainer sort of. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm going to do my my um, paintbrush technique on that one where you round it up. I'm gonna stick the the heart on and then I'm going to find two beads I'm going to put one on either side so think about it so that would give you six journaling charms and you know you can you could make a lot or maybe you just make them singular maybe you don't make them as many as I did maybe you don't put as many beads on as I did maybe you you know don't use as much um, wire or whatever it's still really inexpensive it's still an affordable craft for just about everyone okay so I have two beads one on either side and I'm gonna do my same thing I've got I'm gonna just wrap it around and I am gonna hold it with the pliers though I'm gonna wrap my So for those of you that haven't watched my earring video, I can't tell you, I'm telling you now to watch it. I'm doing a giveaway tomorrow. I, it started yesterday and it's extended till the 3rd. I think it ends like 5 o'clock Hawaiian time. And I'm giving away 10 pair of earrings, um, 10 pair of the soda can earrings that I have showed you all how to make. Um, and it's going to be like a random.org drawing so you just have to like and comment and be a current subscriber and I gave away something the day before I just felt like it I felt like 
don't know about you guys, but I've had kind of a rough year, so I felt like it was kind of, the holidays can be all about consumption and consuming and not necessarily always about giving to those we appreciate, and I really do appreciate my YouTube family. I appreciate each and every one of you. So I had given some little embellishments that I was making away the day before. And I'm giving earrings away tomorrow in that giveaway. So what I was thinking about this was I would also do a giveaway, but I would change it up a little. So in this giveaway, what I thought would be nice is if you like, subscribe, and in the comments, you have to write who you would like me to give a charm to. Like somebody in your life that would like just a really, maybe they need a little holiday cheer, maybe they just need a little random act of kindness, maybe they've just done something so kind to you, for you that you just want to say, hey, I was thinking about you and I thought you'd like it. So you write their name and what they've done for you in the comments and why I should, or even you know, just something cool about them, like make me feel good about myself or, you know, this person really needs a cheer up. Just something, you know, write something about them. And then I'll give you a week until, I think today is the, tomorrow will be the third. So I'll post this on the third. So on the 10th, I will pick one of you and I will give whomever you've listed in your comment section at who should receive it um, I'll send them one and I'll send you one too so doesn't that sing, sound cool and I'll do that for two people for two subscribers so that's four journal terms total it'd be kind of a fun way to you know say thank you to somebody you really care about and you know, they'll probably get a lot out of it, too. They'll be like, wow, that's so cool. Somebody who didn't even know me sent me something cool. So I'm going to do another two-beater. I'm just looking on my thing here. I've got some little faux pearls. Okay, so what's so cool about this is that I know we all have jewelry that people have given us that is just hideous. Let's face it. Okay? We all have that. I don't know one person in this world that did, hasn't received a piece of jewelry that was just not them, that just didn't suit them, that was just not, you know, for them. So take it apart. Use it. Use it in making yourself journal charms. Use it in making yourself these lovely, chunky... chunky journal charms you know it's like so fun and you give it a new life you breathe a new life into it and it's happy and you're happy okay so what I did was I pigtailed that I don't know if you can see it and then I put a bead on it and now I'm going to go back to my paintbrush my paintbrush dowel and I'm going to bend it around and manipulate it down a little. It needs to be a little lower. Now, the more you do this, the easier it gets. The more it takes practice. But once you get it, you never lose it. And it's such a fun skill to have to know how to wire wrap beads. You know? It is so fun to do. Now, I don't know if some of you make your own paper beads. You could totally add those to these, you know, chunky charms. Or I should call them faux chunky charms because they're, they're not going to be heavy. They may look chunky, but they're not heavy at all in any way, shape, or form. Um, you know, I know that... Um, you can use paper beads. You can use anything. I've made those clay dry, air drying clay. Okay, so, so far we have this. I like it so far. I hope you like it too. 
And you know what? And you don't even need, I mean, certainly I've added lots of beads to the other ones, but these don't necessarily need it. You can make it as elaborate or as simple as you want. Okay, I have two more. So, back to my Christmas rant. I know I'm a little stressing out over it. I don't know why, but I just, um, I'm going to use this wire. It's a little thinner. Um, I am just stressing out over it. I am, like, I'm thinking about, I don't know, like, what, what I want to give to my kids, but also, like, there are people in my life that have just been so great to me that I would really like to just show, like, a vote of, like, tremendous appreciation to. So, you know, one of them, I'm making her a shopping bag. She is all into recycling. So I'm going to sew her, I think. I have all these fabric remnants. I think I'm going to sew her a Hawaiian-style fabric bag. Now, one of them I've been tie-dyeing. One of my friend's daughters wanted a tie-dyed backpack. It's like a shopping bag kind of backpack. And I've been tie-dyeing, and hence between the alcohol inks and the dyeing, my hands are like a shade of blue-green. I mean, even here, looks funny. Um... And my nails are atrocious, filled with blue-green, and it doesn't come out. It's my fault. I should have worn gloves, but I was in a hurry. Um, and then, I don't know. I don't know what. So if you guys want to, like, send me some suggestions, I would so, so, so love it. Did I just do that wrong? Of course I did. Ugh, you guys, I'm telling you. See, you have to put it through something. I mean, I guess I can put it through something else. But it's still ridiculous. Anyway. I am going to do it again. Pigtail again. I have done that many times. So, wrap it around. You have your, your circle. Can you see it? Can you see your circle? You have your circle, and then this time I'm going to put it through, I'm going to put it through the, the heart, and then I'll pigtail it, and then I'll put a bead, some beads through it. Um, I'm sort of lately obsessed with, um, I made these little mini envelopes out of tea bags that I was obsessed with. That was like, I was making some tea bag journals for a group that I'm in, and they were fun to make. I really enjoyed them. Usually I make these kind of wild, elaborate, crazy journals. These were like probably the most normal journals I made. And for this group, they were probably like, wait, where's her loud ridiculousness? But um, I enjoyed it. I just thought about making something more functional than loud and wild. Now, whoever gets it can make it loud and wild. That's their prerogative. Um, let me see what color I'm going to use. I've used white and pearl and green and pink. And let me see what I have. Anyway, so this one, the neck, the the new one. So I'm obsessed with those little those little journaling charms, those little um, envelopes that I made. And, and they've been really fun. I mean, so fun. I made these teeny, teeny, tiny envelopes that have a hidden clasp on them. I mean, a hidden paper clip on them, and I, I like them. And then I'm obsessed with making these magazine embellishments. And I made this whole journal for a friend, and she's really sort of new-agey. And I put all these, I found all these, like, ohms and... Just really cool stuff, and I made all these, like, and she's a, an avid, an avid, avid journaler. I'm sorry, you guys, I can't tell where I am in the frame, so looking at it on my tiny phone, I'm used to looking at my screen, my computer screen. Anyway, so she loved it. I mailed it to her. She lives in South America, and she loved it. Love, love, loved it. So I made her these little tiny magazine embellishments sort of obsessed with that. And I'm also obsessed 
with making these flowish style journals. I'm in a group called Trashy Junk Journals and I'll put a link in the description box below for this group and it's just a really fun group. So one of the ladies there, um, the actual lady that started the group, her name is Rosemary Morris and she's pretty awesome. Um, you know, we're always on the lookout for really nice books and stuff like that and she loves flow paper book of paper, you know, flow book for paper lovers and it's really pricey here. I don't yeah, I can't even tell you how much it is. It's like, I don't know. It seems relatively inexpensive, and then you go to have it shipped here, and it's something ridiculous. Like, I think I looked, I was going to send somebody one, and I want to say it was $90. It was ridiculous. Anyway, it's a great book, though. It's really cool. It's made in Norway. I think it's in, anyway, something like that. And it's, uh, it's super cool. And it's got all these, like, cool papers in it, and just pop-up things and uh, it's really very cool. So she organized this swap over in Trashy Junk Journals to make your version of a Flowish Junk Journal, which is so fun. So you share your stash with other people. Well, you know me, I can never do anything just like super simple. I just can't. I don't know why and it's ridiculous. So, and you know, my stash is so weird and eclectic. I have very little scrapbooking supplies. Like, I have more like handmade stuff. So, I made all these crazy, crazy embellishments for my journals. Like, and you know, people are supposed to use them like supply journals. Like, they take them apart and they, um, and they use them in their own artwork. So it's fun. I mean, it should be like something that takes you probably a minute to put together. But like everything that I do, it takes me so much longer because I put so much more, I put a lot of thought into it. So anyway, a few month, about a month ago, I gave this woman, I found this book. We have the, we have a, a, a used, well, it's not really, it, it is a used bookstore, but it's, it's super cool. It's a bookstore that takes books that would have ended up in landfills. They get books from estates and donations and libraries and what have you, and they um, they resell them for very inexpensive. And they are some, and then the money goes to the money goes to fund the library here. So oh my gosh, I mean they, I don't know they bought. I think last year they made like some crazy donation of like a quarter of a million dollars to the libraries here, which for us is a lot. So anyway, I love going there. I don't go that often, but I love going there. And I found this book called Exotic Plants. Okay. And it was bright green. I'll have to show it to you because I'll tell you what happened after that. Okay. So I found this book called Exotic Plants and I take it, all the stuff out of it and I make this flowish style journal for this woman. And I sew pockets for it, and I, but I'm, the more I'm working with this book and this bright lime green thing that it is, the more like I want it. It's like terrible. Like I'm coveting this book. So I find myself like thinking before, of course I sent it to her, but I found myself thinking before I'm sending it to her, oh, I want to keep it. I don't know if any of you have ever had that experience, right? You say, I want to keep it. I want to keep it. I want to keep it. And um, I love the book. I just loved it. I loved it, loved it, loved it. And I, sh I was showing my daughter, the one that's moving to Europe, I was showing her this book. She thinks that it, she, she thinks, I think I mildly amuse her. I mean, she, she's an artist herself, but um, she, she just thinks I'm crazy. So anyway, I show her this book and I tell her, I said, I love this book and I love everything about it. I made this closure for it. I, you know, I don't know what everybody else does, but I like, I'm so into it, right? So I made this closure, make all these embellishments. I, anyway, but it's really the cover of the book that I'm loving. So what do you think? So far, I think it's looking good. Let me zoom out. So I make, I'm just so in love with this book. And I guess I must have talked about it so much. So the other day I go to the mailbox and there's this thing from a bookseller. And I'm thinking, well, I didn't order any book. It was my daughter. She found a used book on Amazon of the same book that I gave this, that I'd made for this swap. 
and she bought it for me and I love it so now I'm gonna make myself my own Christmas present I'm gonna make my own junk journal with it I just love it okay what do you guys think so far I'm actually really digging it I am really digging it now wouldn't this be great for a Valentine's Day journal wouldn't this be so great I am so loving it I don't even know if I'm gonna do anything else to it okay, let me zoom out a little more and I'll show you the other two that I've made that are here on my table I don't have a book close by so here's number two I've made these before but never like for something to show everyone right here's the one I made free with you guys right and I'm loving that and here's number two okay and here is number one this is the first one that I made that I made for this series what do you guys think? I am so loving it. Oh, love, love, love it. I don't think I'm going to do anything to this heart one. I think I like it just as it is. So, that being said, I will give you one last quick tutorial on how to wrap beads before we end, and then I will re-explain our giveaway, and I hope that you guys participate. Okay. I'm going to zoom in on my hands. I thought I was going to add a lot of more be beads to that, but I like it just the way it is. Okay, here we go. Take your piece of wire. Take your dowel. I'm using a paintbrush. Wrap it around until it looks like this. Okay, so now you have your piece of wire wrapped around like this. You are going to hold the circle with your pliers and you're going to wrap your wire. One, two, three. Okay, now I'm just taking my pliers and moving the moving the bits together. Now you can cut it off or you can continue to wrap. I'm going to go ahead and cut it off. Alright. Now you're going to put your bead. I'm going to find a big bead. Put your bead inside. Let me find the hole. If I can't see it. Your bead there. Now you're going to do the same thing. Ready? Wrap it around. And it looks like this. Now, we're going to attach it to something, right? That's what we're going to do if we're going to make it. Or maybe this is the, the beginning of a whole wrap necklace. You're going to hold. If you're going to attach it to something, this would be the time. If not, you're going to hold your circle and start wrapping your wire toward you. Now, a couple things I want to tell you about wire when you buy, go to buy your wire make sure your wire is soft they sell wire dead soft soft medium hard and hard do not buy hard wire ever there's no reason for it if you're a professional jeweler maybe but even then it's stupid because the more you use it and manipulate it the more brittle it gets and it can crack easily okay you want to go ahead and snip it you want to be careful not to scratch your bead or snip off the rock too much so that you snip all the way through and you want to take your pliers and there is your wrapped bead now if you look at the earrings that I made that's exactly what I did here I did the same version and then I put it had put it through the flower and then through the top okay back to the giveaway like comment and subscribe and in the comment you're going to you're going to tell me who you would like who someone special in your like you'd like me to send them one of these to right why you like them what they've done it could be anything and then in one week on the 10th 7 days from now i will draw two people from random.org and send one to you and one to whomever you put in as your favorite person or the person that should receive it. 
Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Thank you for bearing with me with my new camera. I'm very excited about it and have a big learning curve. I hope that you all try. Go get yourself a soda can and try it. Watch my earring tutorial first. It gives you all the basics on how to prep your can and what to do. And then come back here. And if you guys have any questions, I'm always available. Just put leave a message in the comments or message me personally and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Take care, and I'm sending each and every one of you so much aloha. Take care. Bye for now.